Hi, I'm Gwen Ingram, and this is my friend Cricket. We're going to show you some important points that your llama wants you to know about putting his or her pack on correctly. Your first job as a human is to locate the front of the saddle and the back of the saddle. In this case, there's a stringing ring at the back of the saddle. All saddles are marked or in some way different front and back. If you don't know on your saddle which is the front and the back, ask. Ask the manufacturer. Look at your directions. There's probably directions on the internet. You're the human. You can read. You can ask questions. That's your job. Your llama can't do anything except say, this sucks. I can place the saddle on from it either side. It does need to be centered directly down the back of the llama. You can see that the saddle is centered on the llama. If you are purchasing a saddle, or hopefully you will have taken care of this before you purchase the saddle, you will make sure there is spinal clearance all the way down underneath the saddle. Different saddles are designed differently. Llamas are somewhat different from each other. Their basic difference is the level of obesity rather than any structural differences. However, you need to make sure that your saddle clears the spine on your llama. That's your job. Thank you, Cricket. Your next task is to locate the shoulder blade. Llamas don't have withers per se. Withers are, in fact, the vertebral processes that stick up above the shoulder blade on a horse. It is considered acceptable to call the top of the shoulders the withers as a region, but it is not a landmark and has nothing to do with where the saddles are placed. You are interested in the shoulder blade and the muscles because that's what moves. You can't locate the sh back of the shoulders by visual means. You must feel. And if your llama is obese, you may not be able to find this contour. But you can find it, and then you can verify on the saddle. The saddle is placed against the rear of the shoulder, but not overlapping it. If we were to place the saddle a hand's width behind the withers, that would place the saddle back here. This is her pelvis. She will be moving that rear leg into that. Besides, the front cinch will pass well behind the sternum, causing Cricket a great deal of discomfort. Drop the cinches off the back other side of your llama. Obviously, you don't want to smack them in the legs because it's disconcerting to the llama. However, it doesn't mean you have to lay them down all prissy like it's a special event. The front cinch will be fastened first. Make sure you always have a hand between all moving parts of the cinch while it's moving. This saddle cinches may cinch up differently from your saddle. It doesn't matter. There will be parts that move adjacent to your llama. You must protect that with your hand so that your llama's hair does not get caught and pulled badly. Now, we're going to check again. Where is the saddle? Is it where I want it? Is it where I put it? Now I'm going to check at the sternum. That's the bone that runs right, that joins the ribs, right in the front of your chest, in front of the llama's chest. Everybody's got one if you're a mammal. What we want to do is make sure that that cinch does not go further than the length of the sternum. If it does, the pack will be prone to sliding backwards. It will also be quite uncomfortable for the llama. And in this case, everything matches up the way it's supposed to. Now I can tighten this front cinch completely. I should be able to just squirm a thumb underneath the center, the very, very bottom of the cinch. Don't think about going in from the side because that same sternum produces a slight bowed in before it hits the bottom. And you can put your hand right in there and it'll go, oh, this isn't tight enough. You want to go right center at the bottom. Right now, I'd like to also say that if your llama's sternum is too short, 
you may want to consider a narrower cinch so that it does not slide off the sternum and regardless you will want to use a breastplate on your llama even for short excursions when you're not stringing because that saddle can slide backwards and once that cinch is is uh, compressing soft tissue it will make your llama quite uncomfortable against the very end of the sternum if that cinch is overlapping it's not just hitting soft tissue it's also hitting the edge of the bone that's also quite uncomfortable next we'll do the back cinch the back cinch creates a lot of problems for people who are used to using horses because horses have a different anatomy The hard part is getting this at a far enough angle back. You don't want it close to just behind the sternum and just behind the other cinch. That would not feel good. We want this fairly far back. And that means in this many cases that you will have to reach around to the other side, maybe even go around to the other side to make sure that this cinch is not angled on one side but not on the other. And we're not going to tighten this up just yet. We're just going to fasten it. And I'm going to feel where is it in relation to my llama's anatomy. For a female like Cricket, I want about a hand's width between the back edge of the cinch and her nipples. For a male llama or a gelding, that back edge of the cinch will be riding right on the softer part of the sheath the flaccid part, not so that there's several inches between the back of the cinch and the actual penis. Once I've made sure that that is where it belongs. This particular cinch setup has the cinch connectors on the side. It's something that I prefer and virtually nobody else does because it's a little more complicated and requires a little more attention. When I'm out packing all day long, 60 seconds of my attention for the llama's comfort and the stability of the saddle and load is nothing. The cinches do need to be connected together because now that we've got it on this angle that we want to keep the saddle stable and comfortable for the llama and out of the way of their lungs, then we also need a way to keep that cinch from sliding further back onto an uncomfortable portion of their body or sliding back and simply becoming loose. Now I'm going to check, make sure this is centered. If it wasn't, let's say Cricket had gained weight or something since the last time I put it on, I would need to adjust it on the other side. This is Cricket's saddle, so it's adjusted for her. Now I spoke the breastplate, also called a chest plate, chest strap. It doesn't matter what you call it. The idea is it goes around the front of the llama for two reasons. One is to simply keep the saddle in the correct position from, and from sliding backwards, particularly if your llama has too short a sternum. The second and most common reason is to keep the saddle from being pulled off the back by a llama strung behind. Okay, Cricket doesn't normally wear a breastplate because I don't normally string her and she's got the anatomy I want for pack llama. I don't have to make compensations for her. So she doesn't normally wear this breastplate, so I've had to connect it on the other side before I connect it on this side. On a llama that normally wears a breastplate, it will be connected on the off side and you will simply attach these two straps. A single strap on a breastplate just doesn't work well. This breastplate will move out of position, it will be on an angle. It's very important that when you first set up the breastplate that you make it sure it's positioned correctly. You will find by feel the point of the llama's shoulder, and there's the edge of the bone right there, and it needs to be above that. And then you need to make sure that it is below where the neck and the windpipe move into the, the torso. You need to adjust these until it's right. These usually don't move, unlike the cinches, particularly the rear cinch, which will need further adjusting as your llama uh, gains weight, loses weight, maybe he's been out on the trail for a few days and has less gut fill. 